said A, Intel is spiraling out of control. Ryzen 9950X performance is unmatched. AMD talks the future, and new AMD flagship GPUs are coming? Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. First up for today, Intel is in some serious trouble. If you follow the channel, you know that Intel's 13th and 14th gen high-end CPUs have been plagued with crashing issues in a number of games, ultimately leading board manufacturers to release new power profiles, but then Intel told users not to use them. They tried to blame board partners for not using their recommended settings, but that's not really true. I mean, it's been one thing after another, and Intel still haven't given us a real answer. Well, things are now looking even worse, as Alder and Games is now reporting that not only are Intel's desktop CPUs affected, but even their notebook chips are causing issues. A dev from the company posted, quote, Yes, we have several laptops that have failed with the same crashes. It's just slightly more rare than the desktop CPU faults. This was shortly after the company claimed that there was a 100% crash rate with Intel's chips, claiming that Intel is selling defective products. As Tom's hardware mentions, while Intel seems to have done a ton of things to try and fix it, none of them have completely resolved the issue, and now it can apparently affect notebooks too. All I can say is I'm really sorry for anyone who purchased one of Intel's new chips. Next up for today, we have a ton more benchmarks for AMD's Ryzen 9950X CPU, and let's just say it destroys Intel's current gen. Now before I get to that, it's time to get hands on with real language models, like the ones that power modern AI chatbots like ChatGPT. In fact, there's an entire course on it from one place I trust to learn more about computers, Brilliant, and they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about their awesome platform. For one, I sort of said it at the top. Unlike other sites, Brilliant teaches you with their hands-on approach. That means you actually get in there and do it yourself with their fun and engaging puzzles, like their brand new course on large language models. It takes you through everything from how they work to how you can improve your model and more. And they've got a ton more courses for pretty much anything you could want, from beginners to experts alike. So join me and millions others at Brilliant brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code and you'll get a 30-day free trial. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off your premium membership for life. Now back to the story, these new benchmarks come from a forum user in Anantec, who's sharing performance numbers from an engineering sample that seriously makes the CPU one impressive chip. As you can see here, he tested the CPU in Cinebench R23 with multiple power profiles. And here we have comparisons with it to Intel's top of the line 14,900KS. Now what's so wild is that the chip is right on par with Intel's 14th gen flagship. The difference is that the 14,900KS is set to its 320 watt mode, while the 9950 is set to half that at just 160 watts, meaning that AMD's next gen can keep up with Intel's best at half the wattage, and once you start cranking it up from there, it quickly begins to beat it, with its unlimited profile beating it by 12.49%, and that profile still doesn't get to the 320 watts of Intel's. Basically, Intel's really in a lot of trouble here. Besides the fact that AMD's next gen is set to release first, Intel has a long way to go before they can take back the lead, not to mention all the issues with crashing that they're still having, maybe they'll win in overall performance, but performance per watt could still be a major issue. And next up, while I discussed a ton of things that happened during AMD's Tech Day event in my video, there's a pretty big thing I haven't discussed yet that AMD showed off. And if you like to stay up with all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Either way, what I'm talking about is the fact that AMD shared a new CPU roadmap that now shows their next-gen architecture, Zen 6 and Zen 6C, with the 6C obviously proving that AMD plans to continue with their hybrid core design. And these would of course be their Ryzen 10,000 CPU use unless AMD changes the naming of their desktop parts. Not only that, but Mark Papermaster also confirmed that Zen 7 is already in the works. Now, during one of the roundtable discussions, an AMD rep apparently mentioned four generations of CPUs on the AM5 platform, but AMD sent me a clarification on this. According to them, it was just meant to be a hypothetical. Right and that the AM5 platform will be supported through 2027 plus. Basically, they didn't want to be on the hook for Zen 7 also being on AM5, and according to video cards, if we look at the time from Zen 4 to Zen 5, Zen 6 will almost certainly be on AM5, but Zen 7 could miss the 2027 window. Either way, that's still a long time to support a platform, and if AMD does what they have with the AM4, they'll likely release even more CPUs after AM6 comes out. 
And lastly for today, it looks like AMD may be set to release a slew of new GPUs, including new flagship models. This story comes from a couple different places, starting with Seasonic's wattage calculator that recently gave us TGP numbers for Nvidia's next-gen 5000 series cards. What's wild is that this same calculator listed the 7900 XT, 7800 XT, and 7700 XT before their launch a couple years ago as well. This time, they revealed five new cards, the RX 7990 XTX, 7950 XTX, 7950 XT, RX 7700 non XT, and the 7500 XT. Not only that, but several of these cards have already been released in Rockham 5.6 last year, so at least some definitely exist. And of course, AMD has released 50 cards in the past with their RDNA 2 refresh, so it's not unprecedented, but still. When the leak first came out, I wasn't too sure about it. I mean, it seemed too late to release a whole new flagship, as well as multiple SKUs, but I got to thinking. We've heard that RDNA 4 has been delayed until next year, and they weren't planning to release high-end RDNA 4 anyway. Then a couple months ago, AMD admitted their GPU sales were doing terrible. And now at a new story, Acer filed multiple GPUs with the EEC. Specifically, they've submitted documentation for an RX 7900, 7800, and 7700, with that 7700 also being listed on Seasonic's site. Though of course, with the RTX 5000 card, Seasonic has since taken these down, but as always, that lends more credence to the leak. All in all, it's really looking like AMD could soon release a slew of new RDNA 3 based GPUs in the run up to RDNA 4, including a couple new flagship cards. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, would you love to see a more powerful RX 7000 GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermeld. And as always, have a great day!